Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Trumpeter 135th scale Aerosan RF-8 slash GAZ-98. It consists of 87 parts in light gray plastic and two clear and two photo etched parts, plus a small decal sheet and a nice instruction sheet. Additionally included are the uh, painting guide and the water slide decals which are of pretty good quality except that they're a little bit brittle. You'll have to take some caution when using those. We'll talk about that later. But generally, Trumpeter's done a good uh, job with this kit. The parts uh, are nicely cast with no uh, molding flash. Um, there are some interior uh, pin marks but uh, they're hidden so should be no problem. The parts fit together pretty well through the entire build, with the exception of the crew figures. They need a little work to uh, look convincing and natural. And it's a sparse interior with uh, a few external details missing, but overall the proportions and shape are pretty good for this one-to-one -one rendering. Here is the contents of this kit, and some people might call this an open box review. They'd pick up each sprue and Try to find some words to describe the parts, but that won't help you get the kit built now, will it? So, remember we'll be using some Model Master liquid cement here, and always watch the safety and use guidelines by the manufacturer for your own protection and safety. The first thing we'll do uh, after looking over the instructions to get familiar with the construction is to wash the parts uh, in a mild soapy water. Uh, using something like a Dawn soap detergent and then scrub them with a toothbrush to get any film off then uh, rinse them thoroughly and let them air dry. The next thing I did was to remove all the parts from the sprue attachment points uh, with some sprue cutters or uh, small uh, nippers and then um, clean them up using a sharp hobby knife and some sand sticks to get rid of any uh, flash uh, that might be there or sprue attachment points. Next I grab the parts to assemble the engine. There's 14 pieces and there's no hang ups here. It all goes together very easily. Um, there's no surprises and everything fits well. It's a nice little rendered uh, engine for a, a Soviet era vehicle. With the engine assembled I airbrushed it with some oiled steel color from Model Masters and then picked out the details, the hoses and the fan blades with some Model Master flat black. And once I had the engine complete, I set it aside to let it dry. Now align the two sides and the cross members uh, together with the ridges on the bottom of the hull and assemble the main hull structure. Now we can gather up the uh, top hull pieces uh, and the uh, seats for continued finishing. Now grab these pieces and uh, assemble those for the dashboard assembly but leave out the uh, transparent window until all the painting and assembly are done. One minor drawback here to the dashboard was there's no gauge decals that were included in the kit so you could probably use some automobile type gauges or possibly even grab some off the internet uh, uh, some old style Russian gauges uh, to apply here but um, that would have been a nice touch. As you can see the uh, dashboard uh, goes together fairly easily. It's a simple uh, construction. Now we'll paint the uh, seats and the inner hull. I used some Humbrol flat khaki uh, and then set those aside to, to let them dry uh, for f uh, further assembly. When the interior had dried I stuffed some uh, tissue in there and then painted the exterior of the unit with some Model Masters flat white spray. Gather up these parts uh, to continue hull assembly and then paint and attach the radiator, the shocks, the headlight and the engine cover and just like the windshield leave the headlight lenses out until final assembly. Now get out the parts for the uh, propeller assembly and some of the prop rods there and we're going to assemble the propellers components and the kit instructions uh, call for installation of the machine gun at this point but we're going to deviate from that uh, until final uh, assembly to put the crew figures in. So here is the painted hull and prop assembly 
uh, as it's configured and you can see the shocks there uh, attached to the uh, swing arms for the uh, skis. Now finally you can uh, assemble the uh, skis there with the, uh, the triangular ski block mounting box uh, and uh, put those four units together for assembly to the uh, main hull. So here's uh, how the unit would look uh, from the port side uh, with, uh, with the skis in place and upright in position. So spray this uh, entire thing with uh, a light coat of future floor polish to give it a slight gloss for decals and also being able to remove weathering which will start adding. Uh, if you really want to make your model stand out um, this is how we do it. You mix up uh, a wash of some thin blacked uh, artist oils and uh, apply a pin wash to all the rivets and the seams and cracks and crevices uh, with a small uh, like zero size paintbrush. Now the wash was allowed to dry for a few days and then the decals were added. Now these decals were very thin. Uh, in fact some of them came apart in the water so I would recommend you give them a uh, a spray coat of uh, clear lacquer and then cut them out separately to make sure that they uh, they are usable for your model. I would also recommend that you add some uh, of the so setting solution and solvents uh, to the decals once you get them in place to make sure that they conform to any contours that they're going over and add more realism to it uh, to make it look like a painted on look. Next I used uh, a bit of a wider flat brush and I dry brushed the entire model with some Humbrol flat gray and then I simulated some chipping and scratches in the paint using some of the pencil gray uh, and a size zero brush for tiny details and specks. The rust, oil, and grime streaks uh, were simulated with thinned black and burnt sienna artist oils and then uh, painted on once again with a zero brush. Once dry, the model was again coated with uh, a tester's dull coat for the final finish. So once the, um, the clear coat had dried, I installed the windshield and the headlight lens. I wanted to make the windshield look like uh, it had some frost on it so I taped the back side and then I made it a mask where it would look like uh, the uh, driver would scrape off some area for uh, vision and then uh, I used a little dull coat to coat the top edge there in an irregular pattern so that it looked like it was kind of frosty. Once the weathering was complete I turned my attention to the crew figures and here you might run into some problems uh, getting them to sit properly in the model because the driver's hands then don't seem to properly grip the steering wheel and the gunner's hands are not really uh, gripping the machine gun naturally. So I placed the figures into their seats and super glued their arms into place in the right position. So this results in some gaps between the torso and arm. So in order to correct that I used some uh, modeling putty use your favorite brand to fill the gaps and then smooth them out with a moistened paintbrush. So then I um, used a little super glue to attach some toothpicks uh, to the base and back sides of the uh, parts uh, for painting. So with the uh, gunner installed then I went ahead and installed the machine gun and, and unless you want the machine gun to point up in the sky uh, the machine gun mount has to be shortened. Um, so I removed about half of the mounting height so that the machine gun sits level and it looks like he's actually firing or manning the machine gun. The final assembly here consists of installing the photo etched gun sight and uh, lightly dry brushing that with some Model Masters steel. Well there you have it. Uh, and with the exception of some thin decals and uh, the crew figure fit uh, and arms, you know, uh, gripping their weapons, etc. This is a nice little model of a, a very uh, unique World War II subject. Uh, assembly of the kits relatively easy and straightforward. Uh, the crew figures, however, might be a challenge to uh, less experienced model builders. So overall, though, I was pleased with it. And I would recommend it to uh, military model builders who want uh, a little something different. Just to grab one, weather it, and put it on your shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. 
and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and, as always, at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.